French onion soup. While it's a classic soup, I feel like it's usually hit or miss when you go out to restaurants and order it. Certain things that I've noticed about French onion soups is that sometimes they'd be overly sweet and it also can be too sweet because the beef broth that's being used to make the soup isn't really that beefy. So for this recipe, we're gonna make our own beef broth to incorporate some smoke as well as trying to counterbalance the sweetness from the onions with a strong beefy broth. So with that being said, let's get cooking. For this French onion soup, we're gonna start with five large yellow or white onions. You can use Vidalia onions, but I find them to be a little bit too sweet once caramelized. But if that's what you're into, you do you. I also prefer yellow onions for the skin, which I'll talk about later. To cut the onions in a quick manner, split all the onions in half and cut off all the ends. Peel all the skins and set them aside for later. Then start slicing the onions from pole to pole at about a quarter of an inch thickness. I'm cutting them pole to pole, which is like cutting meat with the grain. While this is not necessarily a good thing when cutting meat because it makes the meat tougher and chewier, I think that's a benefit for caramelizing onions because this will be more structurally sound and less likely to break apart during the caramelizing process. Spread the onions between two sheet trays and leave them in a single layer as best as possible. If your onions are looking or feeling a little dry, you can toss them in a little bit of oil or give them a spritz of water. Set them aside for now as we prepare the base of our smoked beef stock. When I make the beef stock, I like using these cross-cut beef shanks. The shanks are great because it imparts flavor from the meat with good intramuscular fat plus added richness and body from the connective tissue and bones. It also has bone marrow. Some argue that the bone marrow is best used in other applications rather than kept in the broth since it's fatty and it'll be strained away. While there's some truth to that, I believe it adds another level of complexity which is welcomed when you make a super flavorful broth that will be the base of many future dishes. Typically, I would only use a shank, but the bones on these are a bit smaller than I'm used to, so I'll be throwing in a few additional beef bones. Scrape all the bones with a spoon to get any bits of small bone fragments or gunk created when the shanks were cut on a bandsaw. Getting rid of this now will allow for a less cloudy broth later. To the shank and the bones that we already have, add in a big chunk of carrot for some color and some sweetness, and also half an onion. Let's take our trays of onions and beef outside to get nice and smoky. We want to incorporate maximum flavor into our stock. So we gotta start with fogo lump charcoal, fire starters, and the greatest umami bomb on the planet, Korean newspaper. The bigger the headline, the bigger the flavor. So we're using front page news to make the stock. Once the coals are ready, I'm gonna build a big fire to help create the Maillard reaction on our shanks for maximum beefiness and smoke from the oak for a nice, mellow, slightly sweet smoke flavor profile. The shanks will be placed on a top rack where it's a bit hotter, with a little bit of space in between each shank to get smoke on all sides. Underneath on the main grate, I'll place the two sheets of onions to cook at a slightly lower temperature so they don't burn, and also to catch any drippings. Cook at 300 to 325 degrees on the top rack for an hour to an hour and a half or until you see color development. After about two hours, this is what it looks like. All the shanks have great color, the fat has started to render, and the smell coming off the shanks just makes you want to salivate. The carrot and onions are like sponges that soak in all the smoke while concentrating on flavor from the high temperature cooking. To turn this into a stock, add in all the shanks, bones, and vegetables into a pot. Add three bay leaves, 15 to 20 black peppercorns, top it off with water, and bring it to a boil. Once it's reached a boil, let it simmer on low for a long, long time. I also forgot two things. We're gonna add five to six cloves of garlic, and all of the onion skins and scraps will also go into the stock pot. The color of the onion skin will give the stock a dark, rich color, which I really like, and it's a great way to use all your scraps. While the stock is going, let's go check on those onions. You can tell just by the color how much smoke they've taken in. These onions combined with the beef broth is going to create an unbelievable combination. To further the smoke development of these onions, move all the onions into a container and wrap it in plastic. Like you would do with smoked cheese, it will continue to develop and deepen that smoke flavor. These will be stored in the fridge while the beef stock finishes. After simmering for over 10 hours, strain it, skim off the fat, and chill overnight. 
If you simmered it long enough, this is what it should look like. The rich color is coming from all the smoke, the natural color of the beef, and also all those onion scraps that we added. The connective tissue and bones have created this delicious beef jello that when warmed up, that will be sticky and lip smacking from all that collagen. If it's still pretty loose, I would recommend letting it go for a few more hours. And even after you've done that, if it's still loose, I would just make sure next time that you add more bones to your stock. Store them in different size containers to have them ready for other dishes in the future, or just sprinkle in some salt and enjoy a super soothing drink like a savory cup of coffee in the morning. If you want to make this even more rich and flavorful, put it back over the heat and reduce it down to a half or a third to make your own demi glace. Now that our stock is ready to use, let's go back to our smoked onions. As soon as you take off the plastic wrap, the waft of smoky, oniony goodness just hits you in the face. As it was sitting in the fridge, you can also see the beef fat that dripped on top coating the onions. We've waited long enough, so let's get these babies caramelized. Into a heavy bottom pot, put in one to two tablespoons of some oil, all the smoked onions, and about four to five tablespoons of butter. You want to stir this regularly for a long time. Caramelized onions isn't just about getting color on the onions, but it's about slowly breaking them down and releasing the sugars. These have been going for 26 minutes. They have great color, but are not close to being done. The onions are still a little snappy. We want them to become jammy without becoming mushy. So back on the heat it goes. This is what the onions look like after an hour and 45 minutes. Yes, it is a long time, but man, it is worth it. The onions have a dark, rich, glossy color. They're still holding together, but are soft. Throughout the process, I added a third of a cup of water two or three times to scrape off some of the fawn that was collected at the bottom of the pot. The other times I decided to add water are when the onions are looking like they're cooking too fast or getting dry. And if that happens, just reduce the heat or can add a splash of water. Now that our onions are done, it's time to build the layers of flavor. You can use any alcohol that you like, like wine, sherry, or even a whiskey. I'm going to go traditional and I'm going to add a third of a cup of brandy. Bring the pot over to the stove to burn off the alcohol that you just added. Then to that, add a generous pinch of salt, a lot of black pepper, two bay leaves, four to five sprigs of thyme, and two quarts of your smoked beef stock. Give it a good stir, bring it over to the stove, and let it simmer for 20 to 30 minutes. After tasting it, I feel like it needed a boost in flavor. So I added two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, then did a final test for salt and pepper. And now our soup base is finished. Put the lid back on and let it sit on the stove and keep warm as we finish the last piece of the soup. We're gonna make sourdough croutons to put into our French onion soup. Cut the sourdough into one inch pieces and cut them into big chunks. I think it's pretty annoying when you're trying to get everything on your spoon and you have one big floating piece of bread that's blocking you from getting to the good stuff at the bottom. We're gonna make smaller pieces so you can easily get spoonfuls of soup onion and bread in each bite. I'm also going to cut the crust off the bread because it can get kind of chewy and leathery which I don't want in the soup. Toss the bread in some olive oil and toast it in the oven at 425 degrees. Flip it halfway through until nice and golden brown like this. Toasty on the outside but still a slight bounce on the inside. Into an oven safe ramekin, add your soup three quarters of the way up. Place the toasted sourdough bread so that points are sticking up slightly over the rim. Then add your cheese. Since I had leftover cheese from last week's grilled cheese video, I added some parm, a good amount of gruyere, which is the most important cheese, and slices of provolone on top for extra melty texture. Place a ramekin on top of a tray so it's a little bit easier to move around. Put it in the oven with the broiler setting until the top is nice and melty. If it's not toasting evenly or you don't have a broiler setting, use a kitchen torch to get the cheese nice and toasty up top and get the texture you're looking for. And there you have it folks, this is our finished, smoked French onion soup. This soup, if done from scratch, is a labor of love, just like barbecue. Slow smoked bones that we use to make an amazing beef stock that simmered even longer, onions that we cooked for almost two hours, then finished with finesse at the end to bring some balance and texture to the soup. The thick croutons allow for the bread to absorb the soup, but without becoming soggy. Even the last piece of bread I had in this bowl still had some texture. The tang of the sourdough is a great contrast to the rich soup, and while the soup is rich in flavor, it didn't feel overly heavy. Not going over the top with way too much cheese just for the sake of a good cheese pull, and skimming the fat off the top of the stock are key to having a well-balanced soup. If you feel like it needs a bit of brightness, I like putting a few drops of some sherry vinegar. Overall, this is probably the best French onion soup I've ever had. Yes, it can be a lot of work, 
But being able to practice different cooking techniques, I think is super fun. And I think it allows you to think outside the box when you create more food in the future. But most importantly, I think those lucky enough to try what you did will greatly appreciate it. And that's what it's really all about. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, not just getting a French onion soup recipe, but as well as a recipe and a method to make your own beef stock. And I really do feel like that smoke element that we added into the beef broth really kind of propelled this dish forward. If you guys enjoyed it, please make sure to like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next one.